Hey everyone, I'm Mr. Ray, and today we're going to talk about the logistic growth equation. This is going to be an introduction to this topic. We're not going to derive the equation here, as we'll need calculus for that, and I'm aiming this at a pre-calculus audience. My goal here is to give you a sense of how this equation works, what's going on behind the scenes, and why we need it in the first place. When you get to calculus, though, you'll be able to derive it, and it's a really cool bit of mathematics. I'm going to be basing this video off some work I did in a previous video on Newton's Law of Heating and Cooling, so if you haven't seen that, you may want to take a look at that first. I'll put the link in the description. So back to the example we started with in the last video where we had this bacteria growing in a petri dish. And we started by thinking about why the basic exponential model won't work here. So if we start with one bacteria, and then we have two, and four, eight, 16, everything's going fine for a while, but eventually what's going to happen is these bacteria are going to fill up this dish, and we're going to have a problem. Now this means that the exponential, A equals PE to the RT, that's not going to work here because that graph or that model is just going to want to grow without bound. But of course, there's going to be some cap here, right? There's some amount of bacteria that's going to be the max that will fit in that Petri dish. Now, the way we attempted to resolve this problem in the last video was with Newton's law of heating and cooling. However, that was still an oversimplification. While Newton's law of heating and cooling does address the, the idea of having a maximum amount, what we call the ambient or surrounding temperature typically in that model, so we can't grow past that amount, there's still something off with the rate of growth here. If you think about what this curve is saying, the, the longer you go on in time, right? So as time goes by, this curve starts to go up less and less and less. It's getting closer and closer to this line. And if you think about what that means, that means that we're getting less and less new bacteria as time goes on. Okay, well that's fine, but that means that we're getting the most new bacteria in the beginning. And that's actually kind of a problem, right? So eventually when we get towards the cap, we're not going to be creating a lot of new bacteria because there just isn't room for them anymore. But in the beginning, if we only have one or two bacteria, we shouldn't be seeing this fast rate of growth. It should be taking a while to get going in the beginning and then eventually speeding up and then slowing down again. So this is where Newton's law of heating and cooling is even still insufficient for a natural growth model like bacteria. Works great for putting something in a freezer or putting something in an oven, but there's still an extra complication we need to deal with. But to understand how we address this complication, let's first put Newton's and exponential growth side by side. So again, the problem with exponential growth is that it just grows forever, right? So this is never gonna stop, so it won't work in a situation where we have a bound. The problem with Newton's is that it grows fastest in the beginning, and that's a problem because in the beginning we'll actually have small growth. Now to understand the difference between these two models, it helps to have a sense of where they come from. So when we're talking about exponential growth and decay, this actually comes from a rate of change that is proportional to the amount present. When I say the amount present, what I mean is the amount of bacteria, or the amount of whatever the thing is that you're keeping track of, the amount of money. And this works perfectly for something like money because the more money you have, the faster your money is going to grow because it's growing proportional to how much is there. This also works for natural phenomena like bacteria up to a point because in the beginning, they're going to grow proportionally to how many bacteria there are. The more bacteria there are in the dish, the more bacteria they can create. And so you're going to get faster and faster growth rates. However, eventually you hit a ceiling. So that breaks down. Now, Newton's law of heating and cooling, this is when the rate of change is proportional to the difference between the current value and the max value. In other words, if you go outside and it's really cold out, your body temperature is very different from the temperature outside. So you have a fast rate of change. In other words, you lose heat quickly to the outside environment. If your body temperature is close to the temperature of the environment, if you go outside in 85 or 90 degree weather, you're going to lose heat much slower to the environment because there's a much smaller difference there. This is how heating things up and cooling things down works, at least in a constant temperature environment. If I put something in the oven, it's going to start warming up very quickly at first, but as it approaches the temperature of the oven, it'll gradually increase because there's not much of a difference anymore, so the heat transfer slows down. We kind of like this behavior for the beginning of the bacteria, right? In the beginning, small amount of bacteria means slow growth rate, growth rate and over time it increases. And we like this activity for the end behavior. As we approach the limit of the population, we need that growth rate to slow down. So we, what we need is something that's sort of exponential for a little while and then transitions to this type of a model eventually. And the way we get that is by actually combining these two ideas. So a more realistic expectation, the one we can actually use to model these bacteria in the dish, 
is we combine both models. When we combine both models, we're now talking about an equation that is where the rate of change is proportional to the amount that's present, the number of bacteria, but also proportional to the difference between that amount and the maximum value. In other words, as we approach the maximum value, it's going to slow that growth rate. In the beginning, when we have not very many present, that will slow the growth rate. And these two will kind of trade off. So we'll get this exponential in the beginning, and then it'll switch to a more Newton's law of heating cooling type of style in the end. If we think about the graph of this, it's going to look something like this. We have some initial population amount that we start with, and initially it's going to grow slowly. But over time it'll grow quicker, and then at some point it's going to start to slow down and even out to that curve there. All right. This point here, where I kind of changed from increasing growth rate to a decreasing growth rate, actually turns out to be important, and it's always at half of the max value. Always right at the halfway point that we switch over from this sort of exponential type of growth to this Newton's Law of Heating cooling style growth. This is the actual equation that generates this. So this is the logistic equation. It comes in two pieces. So the equation itself, P of T, meaning like the population at time T, this capital C is the carrying capacity. All that means is what's the maximum number of bacteria that will fit, or the maximum number of fish in a pond. And then in the denominator, we have 1 plus A. So this A is a constant, which we'll talk about in a moment. And then E to the KT. K is that constant which is related to the rate of growth just like in Newton's law of heating and cooling that K is always going to be a negative number and it's typically a small negative number so we have to be careful with decimal places and T is of course time now this constant here a what this is is the carrying capacity minus P naught so that's your initial population right how many bacteria you start with so we look at the difference between those two and we divide that by the actual amount you start with. So this is a ratio that's giving us some sense of how big the difference we started with is compared to the amount that we started with. So here's a graph of a logistic equation, and you can see it has that nice S-shaped curve. This equation is set up with a carrying capacity of 100. I have the initial population set to 3.5, and my growth rate is about negative 0.36. Now you can see that if I change the initial population, it affects the graph, right? So you can see that moving there. The, as I move that up, it gets a little bit less S-shaped curve. That beginning growth rate is faster because you have more to work with. If you really push that down to, say, just one individual in the beginning, you've got this really slow ramp up. But then once it starts to get going, it goes very quickly, and it's exponential through here. And then right about here at this halfway point, it's going to start to slow down and go more to that Newton's Law of Heating look. Surprisingly, using it is actually very straightforward. So if we have a population growing according to a logistic model, that's the one we're talking about here, if we start with an initial population of 1,000, carrying capacity of 10,000. So right away, let's calculate that A value. So remember, A is our carrying capacity. That's going to be 10,000 minus 1,000, in this case, the initial value, over 1,000. So that'll give us an A of 9. So now that we know what that A is, we're going to use this initial condition that after one year it was 1400, right? So P of 1 is 1400, and we're going to plug into the equation to solve for K. So what we know is that we can say 1400 is equal to 10,000. That, of course, is essentially a proportion. You can put over 1, cross multiply. So we get 1400 plus 12,600 e to the K equals 10,000. Then e to the k is equal to 8,600 over 12,600, which means k is the natural log of 86 over 126. And then we get a k approximately negative 0 0.3819346107. Now remember, these k's tend to be pretty sensitive, so we want to use all of those digits. I would suggest just storing them in your calculator. I usually just store them as x, and then I can just pull it up quickly later, but you can store them as any variable that you want then you're just going to plug back into the original equation. So we know the population after four years is going to be 10,000 over 1 plus 9e e to the 4k. And plugging that in the calculator, we get p of 4 is approximately 3386. Now, I want to make a point here. I'm giving a round number answer. The, the actual decimal is 3386.119134 on my calculator. 
but we're talking about a population here. So we're talking about individual organisms. You can't have a fraction of an organism, so you're gonna to have to round this to the nearest number, and you're always going to round down. Here's in fact the actual curve for this. You can see that's the carrying capacity of 10,000 with an initial population of 1,000. And here's our K, negative 0.38193 and all of that there, all right? So there's that 1,400, that's our initial condition that they gave us. And they asked us what the population would be after four years. And there you can see that intersection is that 3386 and change. All right, let's look at another example here. Say biologists stock a lake with 150 fish and a carrying capacity estimated at 1950. So starting with those two numbers, right? There's our carrying capacity and 150 fish is 150 fish is our initial population. So the first thing we're going to want to do is calculate that value for A. So A is going to be 1950 our carrying capacity minus that 150 fish the initial population and then that's going to be over the initial population again so that same 150 plugging that in the calculator we're going to get an a of 12 for this one once we have that value for a we'll look for the initial condition population at year two is double the initial so that would be double 150 or 300 and we'll simply now plug in with that initial condition to find our k so p of 2 would be 1950 that carrying capacity over 1 plus 12 that a e to the 2k because this is the second year equals 300 we get 300 plus 3600 e to the 2k equals 1950 which gives us e to the 2k equals 1650 over 3600 2k is then the natural log of 165 over 360 one half of that is our k which is approximately negative point three nine zero zero seven nine two seven eight eight and again we want to use all of those decimal places now we want to know the population after five years so we'll simply go to the equation p of five to evaluate that 720 but we need to round to the nearest whole number because we're talking about a population part b says how long is it going to take for the population to reach 1000 i don't know what time is right so p of time so I'm just going to set it equal to 1,000 and then cross multiply and solve for k. 1,000 plus 12,000 e to the kt equals 1950. e to the tk equals 950 over 12,000. tk is the natural log of 95 over 1,200. I'm just simplifying, knocking off a power of 10 there. And then t is 1 over k times the ln of 95 over 1,200. Again, that k is stored in my calculator, so I can just go ahead and type that in the way it looks. And I'm going to get about 6.5 years. So here's the actual solution curve here. You can see that this is that K that we got. That's that two years in. We're at 300. All right, so here's that five year, 720. If I also take a look at the graph Y equals 1000, then we'll see that that intersects right here at 6.502, and there's that six and a half years that we got before. So what we have here is a fairly sophisticated way to model population growth. Now, there are more sophisticated and more accurate ways to model population growth, but they rely on differential equations. So at a pre-calculus level, this is the best we can do, but it's pretty darn good. The way we get this is by combining the two aspects of exponential growth decay and Newton's law of heating cooling, where what happens is we are essentially growing exponentially for a while, and then we are transitioning to a Newton's law of heating type of growth. When you look at the graph of one of these, it has this very distinctive S-shaped curve where you're growing slowly in the beginning and gradually you speed up until you reach the halfway point at which the growth starts to slow down and it follows Newton's law of heating. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to my channel, feel free to leave a comment below, and as always, have a great day.